Hello, friends. Thanks for being here. I am doing a little get ready with me style video today. Just kind of realized I had a bunch of products that maybe you might like to see in action. Uh, a few things I have mentioned, some that I haven't. So yeah, we're just going to have a nice little enjoyable get ready with me session. And uh, one thing that's new to me, this is from Tarte. And this is the Clean Slate Timeless Smoothing Primer. I have not even tried this on my face yet. It looks a lot like the Mali Perfect Prep Poreless Primer. Feels a little thicker though, so I'm gonna try that all over the skin. Ugh, it's got some tug. I mean, it's smooth, but it's thick. So how the heck are you guys? Um, I'm doing good. Uh, the pregnancy is going well so far. I am approaching uh, the 20th week, the halfway point, as of Thursday. I'm not exactly sure when this video is going to get posted, probably Saturday. So yeah, I'm at 20 weeks, and actually, this weekend, I will be back home at my parents' house. I always consider that back home, you know? Um, my parents are celebrating 50 years of wedded bliss, as they say, so uh, they're having a little uh, shindig there to celebrate that, which I am very excited for. So I think that's going to be fun and I'm also just I, I like taking Belle back home to like where I grew up and I don't know it's just you see things through new eyes you know the playground I used to play on and all these different things and that was a house I grew up in and don't let me start singing Miranda Lambert the house that built me but that is the house into foundation now I'm gonna be using this boots number no. seven airbrush away in cool beige um, did I it was a haul video I think where I talked about this and I was wearing it and a lot of you thought it looked uh, pretty good so I'm gonna apply it and it's got the little dropper so this is a very thin like lightweight product here like super liquidy consistency but it's pretty concentrated too why did I just oh, okay let's just get it on my face right before it drips all over the carpet although it would probably be a nice match for this carpet not that anyone's ever looking to purposely drip foundation on their carpet you know what I do want to get though um, under this makeup area, and I should have done this a long time ago, is one of those nice, like, plasticky things that chairs roll on really easily in an office. Where's a Kleenex when you need one? Those things would be so nice because it would be such a catch-all for any, like, dropped product. <laughs> Lord knows I've had some drips. Or some breaks where you just have that one little nugget of broken eyeshadow that gets nicely crushed down into your carpet. So there's that foundation very lightly all over, and then I'm just going to get a little bit more on here and show you just the buildability of it a little bit, because I feel like the redness and the under eyes can be helped a bit by this when you just add a little bit more. See the difference? You maybe don't see a difference in my cavern there, but, you know, places are looking better. <laughs> You ever see Get Ready With Me videos where people have like perfect hair already? I'm always the do the hair second. And by do the hair, I mean, you know, sometimes it's just a matter of combing through it with my fingers and taking it down from the bun. Foundation is on and it's, it's a nice finish. You know, it could be more coverage than this, by the way. Look at this. What am I, an ice cream cone up there? But we're kind of at this medium buildable coverage, but the finish is really nice because it's mattified, but not like intensely crazy matte. New product I would like to use that I have been mentally comparing to my Tarte uh, Shape Tape, which I love so much. I did a video devoted to Tarte Shape Tape and my Urban Decay All Nighter Foundation. And then a bunch of you said, but try that Kat Von D Locket Concealer. So I got this in L11 Neutral. And um, I've been trying it, and it's really freaking good coverage, too. But I feel like this is just a little stiffer, a little bit harder to blend across the skin. Anybody else with me on that? I feel like the Tarte was just just slight bit easier to work with, but they're almost on par with one another in terms of coverage. Two very exceptionally full coverage concealers. And I'm a little paranoid about how fast this can set on my under eye, so that's why I'm doing one eye at a time, because I can take my time blending this one side and not worry about the other side solidifying. <laughs> I really see a considerable difference on the under eye compared to looking over here and over there, so it does make me happy for coverage.
But also, probably the most important thing to me is the difference in the way these wear. I feel like the Kat Von D is a bit drier than the Tarte. Like, I see it more as the day wears on. It just, I can see the fine lines a bit more. Kind of what I would expect out of a full coverage concealer. The Tarte was really exceptional in that way and that it kind of defied my expectations and it stayed looking so fresh and so smooth and even on that under eye area. I'm gonna do a little dab of concealer right here because sometimes I get red right between those brows. And then I also got, at the same time I ordered that concealer, I got this translucent setting powder. Um, I'd heard so many good things about this Kat Von D translucent powder. I also like that there's a little star. Do you see the star sifter? points. I love that. Okay, I'm going to get a little bit out here. And I have baked with this, you know, it seems to do well in that respect. But let's face it, more often than not, this is all I really want to be doing is just a little lightweight setting powder here. Just want that concealer to set and be locked in for me all day long. It's a very lightweight powder though, very fine, um, really doesn't look like much on your skin, but it does certainly does mattify. And then I'm gonna use some of my favorite powder. Um, this is my Chanel Double Perfection Lumiere Powder. I wear the shade 32 Beige Rose. And this is just a great, great powder for not looking like powder and I do want to do a video powders that don't look like powders. Um, I'm just having a really hard time <laughs> uh, coming up with several, you know, because it, it's sort of hard to gauge. Foundations that don't look like foundation, it's like just by nature of the consistency of a foundation, it's going to be more likely to easily achieve that goal than a powder not looking like powder. But I do have, you know, I've, I've got some candidates. I'm just kind of whittling the field right now. Hey bub, there's bub. Mm. Bub's got a trial. How you doing, bub? Good. You feeling it? Feeling it. Locked in? I'm locked Committed? In. I think you're going to do awesome. Thank you. Mm, love. And even if you don't, I'll still love you anyway. Okay. Probably. Okay. There's a lot of different things that, you know, lawyers are tasked with doing, but the courtroom trial stuff is is pretty dang exciting, I gotta say, and I love um, when Bub will practice his opening and closing statements on me and I can be like, oh, but what if you, you know, want to uh, tweak it a little bit? It's fun. I like that. get very intrigued. But now it's like I'm watching an episode of a great legal drama and he's going to go off and do it and I can't be there to, you know, watch it all go down. So I'm waiting for the phone call. How did it go? I probably look like I applied just a crap ton of this powder for as much as the brush was swooping over my face, but I really put on very little. I realize this is powder foundation type coverage, and so I just like it really lightly all over, evens the whole thing out, and I just, I like the look. What can I say? I'm going to do a little bit of contour with my e.l.f. contour palette. I love this little thing. I'm just going to use my deep contour color there. Give myself a little bit of a cheekbone. Any Olympics watchers in the house? What did you think about the way everything ended up? <laughs> I love watching the gymnastics and the swimming and the diving. And my mom and I, you know, we talk on the daily, on the phone. And I swear there's been like several times where I'll get on the phone with her and she'll be like, you know, how about Michael Phelps, you know? Just amazing. <laughs> Just can't get over that Michael Phelps. Now Ryan Lochte, I'm not going to touch that one right now. <laughs> Do a little bit of the bronzer shade, but with a slightly larger brush. My e.l.f. brush. Just kind of warm up the face a little bit there. That can make a nice little blush, too. If you just wanted barely their blush. But on this day, I want blush blush. So I'm going to go into this palette that I haven't really used enough of. It's that Too Faced Love Flush blush palette. And what's the shade I should use when I really don't know where I'm going with my look? Probably like this neutrally one here, this Baby Love. Hmm. Can't decide if that's quite doing anything. Maybe not so much. You like Get Ready With Me because this is really what getting ready with me is like. Don't you guys have this too? You know, not everything really goes exactly how you might map it out. I'm going to do a little love hangover actually. I know I really like that shade. Little peach never hurt anybody. I made the other night a pretty fantastic concoction. I am on kind of a roll with Pinterest recipes, okay? 
I've made like five things that I absolutely love and one thing that I hated. I know, you guys probably want to know the thing that I hated first. All right, it was a mug like a, a mug pie, no, a, a cake in a, it was a cake in a mug that you microwave, three ingredients, an egg, a ripe banana, and like three tablespoons of cocoa powder, put it in the microwave. Consistency was great. After a minute, you know, I was like, oh, this is like chocolate lava cake, and I'm getting all excited, and then I take a bite, and I'm like, this is the most bitter thing ever. Three tablespoons of cocoa was way too much. I think you want to toss in a little stevia or Splenda in. Maybe just go one tablespoon of cocoa. I don't know. I had to throw in like five marshmallows to even make that thing work. Highlight is this L'Oreal Lumi True Match in the shade Rose. I like to go between those light shades there. But yeah, needless to say, unless I alter that recipe quite a bit, I'm not going to be making that again. But the thing that was really, really good recently that I made and loved was a chicken salad pie. It's kind of like a fusion of pot pie and chicken salad. It was so good. I'm going, I swear I'm going to write a blog post about like these four or five recipes that I made that I really thought turned out great. I've also got a go-to cookie recipe that could not be easier that my mom, the cookie queen, thought was just outstanding, so that was great. A little hard candy sheer envy primer mist. And then for brows, did you know NARS has some new cream, like brow pomades? It's called Brow Defining Cream. There's a dark, dark brown. I've used both of these. One is like a near black, and one is just a deep brown. This is the one in El, El Ju. I don't know if we've got both a silent D and a silent F in this word. I know anytime I can't pronounce something, there'll be a bunch of y'all in the comments section who can, so... You tell me. Give me an easy, clear uh, pronunciation guide on that one, would you? But anyway, this would be the lighter of the two shades that I just mentioned, and I'm going to use this little brush from Tarte. So Belle has started going to a little kid's, like, it's like 18 months to three years old, mm, parent and me type gymnastics class. It's just kind of like taking them through the paces of, of different fun little things and you know they've got just utilizing all the different things that they have there in the gym like the tumble track and the foam pit. The thing is is that there's usually a lot going on in that gym at the same time. I mean picture this. Toddler. Wide open space. You got cheerleaders practicing over here. You got tumblers working over here. I mean it is like her instinct to just want to run over to those people and I don't know like get knocked out by a tumbling pass. Maybe just she would just stand and watch once she gets there. But you got my pregnant self chasing after her like left and right. That's the thing about this age. You know, she's not just in there, her and the teacher. The, the parent is expected to get involved and they really should. You know, at this age, the, the kid needs some guidance, some help, some direction. But I can tell you what, she loves to be there. And she loves her teacher, Miss Henna, and she loves saying Miss Henna. She had a funny little situation last week when I was like, she was wearing her Yadier Molina St. Louis Cardinals shirt with a number four on it. And I'm like, who's number four for the St. Louis Cardinals? Who's number four for the Cardinals? Who's on your shirt? Do you know? Miss Henna. Not Miss Hannah, it's Yadi. It's like when asked any question, the default answer is Miss Hannah. And she's such a little ringleader because she'll start doing something at gymnastics and then she'll make sure, you know, I'm participating. Mommy too, Miss Hannah too. She's a little boss already, I tell ya. Um, so I've got my face and my brow done and I'm going to do a little eye primer. Why not just go with what works, right? I think for the eye look, I'm going to combine a couple new things. I got this little, um, when I had my Sephora order with the Kat Von D stuff, I ordered this um, Visart Theory palette in Minx. So, oh, it's so pretty. It's got your three shimmers, your three mattes. Now, I do already have the Sultry Muse, and I thought some of these shimmers seem similar to what was in there, but they're not exactly the same. But anyway, I think I'm going to need at least the mattes from that palette because I want to use um, 
my metallic or foiled or whatever they were called shadows from Makeup Geek here. I think I might center this look around the olive because I just, I don't know, I haven't worked with that type of tone in a while, it feels like. But the first thing I'm gonna do is take this light creamy matte, which I am excited to have a few matte neutrals from this brand because while I have the matte um, Visart palette that is like, what's it called? I have this one, the dark matte, but I don't have their matte neutrals. So it's nice to just have a few of those real basic shades and kind of see, you know, how good are they really? They're nice. And I'm just working that all over as kind of a base shade, that lightest color, very sheerly. Then I'm gonna use this brown in my crease. Shocker, I know. And this pretty green that I have, it says foiled eyeshadow, yeah, and the shade is called Jester. And this is my first time using one of these, so I'm gonna pat this on my lid. Ooh. Okay, tell the truth. Who has already purchased pumpkin spice flavored coffee and creamer? I have. Drinking it currently. I'm in that fall mood, but I don't want to shut the pool down. You know, I want the best of both worlds. Okay, yeah, this is pretty. This is some color I can really get down with wearing. Olive greens, beautiful. And then I do have this shade, which was one of their, I think it was labeled as a duochrome eyeshadow maybe. It's this color called Karma. You see the little bit of orangey, yellowy, hint of green almost in that shade? I'm gonna pick up just a hint of that. I'm gonna put it a little bit around the inner corner. It just kind of looks yellowish. And I think I wanna use my darkest matte color on the outer part of the eye. The contrast just makes that lid color pop even more. Okay, I'm using now kind of that same shade, but just this fine crease brush, just to really get it exactly where I want it. Eyeshadow control freak. Now just blend. And then just a touch of this again. Bring that up lightly on the border. I wore this um, little palette when I went to the Carrie Underwood concert and I thought it looked really pretty. Last thing I'm gonna do on the top part of the eye is I just want a little more green. I almost always do this if I've got kind of a spotlight lid type shade. Um, whether I really need to or not, sometimes I go back and just re-emphasize that color. Because you never know, you know, when you've been blending around it, even if you haven't been raking over the color, sometimes it just needs to be brought back to life just a bit. Staying with Makeup Geek here, this is the Full Spectrum Eyeliner Pencil in Nude. Um, just a regular sharpenable nude shadow pencil, or eyeliner pencil. It's been requested that I do a video all about eyeliners, just best in every form or fashion. So if you're interested in that, uh, let me know down in the comments section. And then on the under part of the eye, it's going to be kind of a mix of my two matte browns. I'm just gonna softly blend that here. And then upper lash line, I think I'm gonna do brown. It's the deep espresso shade of the Too Faced sketch marker. I got a brand new mascara that I'm gonna try in this video. It is the L'Oreal Voluminous Feline Instant Volume Full Density Lash. Must say I love the emerald green packaging on there. Here's what it looks like. Fairly large wand, but the bristles are pretty short. So hopefully I'll feel like I can really get in there with it. But I need to curl first. I kind of like that it's not loading on too much product all at once. It seems to separate pretty nicely. Let's see what another coat can do. I'm one of those where a mascara, sometimes the first time I try it, that could be like the worst experience I have. And then as it dries down and dries down a little bit, the formula thickens up slightly, I'll start to like it even more. So that's why you don't see me doing first impressions on mascara a whole lot. I actually don't do first impressions at all. Just because I, I value the researched and like tried and tested review. You know, and I don't want to see that go by the wayside in this YouTube world. I, I really respect when people get on and they've been trying something for, you know, days or weeks or heck, even months, and they've really got something to share on it. 
I really value that because that takes time and you know that time is valuable and the things you learn trying a product over time are just flat out different from the things that you observe as you first use something. Tried and true Clump Crusher water resistant on my lower lashes just because I know I can trust it. Huda Beauty Samantha False Lashes. Okay, my lashes are on and I think I'm going to do this Tartist lip paint. It's one of the glossy lip paints and the shade is called Double Tap. So let's see how this goes. This is like my lip color, but a little bit more brown and a lot bit more shiny. <laughs> lot bit. Somebody please use that phrase today. Well, there is my finished look. I hope you guys had fun with me here trying out, uh, I guess we had some old things, some new things, and just kind of a late summer glam. So thank you for tuning in, and I will see you very soon in my next video. Bye!